Hello, hello, you can all hear me? Yep, good. Um, hi everybody, thanks for joining us today. Um, I wasn't going to do this, but I'm going to start off with a completely unrelated anecdote, um, just to give you a little insight into the past 24 hours of my personal life. Um, yesterday I had to leave the conference early after I received three panicked messages from my wife. Uh, they read, there is crap everywhere, there is crap everywhere, OMG, there is crap everywhere. Uh, and I have an 11 month old baby, so I was like, yeah, obviously this happens all the time. Uh, but there weren't any emojis in the message, so I kind of figured there was something afoot. And yeah, a sewer pipe burst under the house. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty sure my house is condemned. We all had to flee the building. It was kind of terrible. So yeah, as I said, completely unrelated. <laughs> Wipe that from your mind. <laughs> um, if you do see me blanking out, it's because I'm thinking about something else, like where I should live now. <laughs> anyway, it's fine. It's totally fine. Uh, so completely unrelated, let's talk about GovCMS scan. Uh, it's a module we built with the ult ultimate end goal of connecting central data stored in, C in CCAM and providing a visualization layer in GovCMS and Drupal 7 sites. Uh, so a few logos on the screen. Um, let's quickly run through all of the people, companies, technologies involved in this one. Uh, we'll start with the easy one. It's me. Uh, I'm Stuart Rollins, a senior technical architect at Acquia uh, and the technical architect of the State of the Environment Report, which is the parent project of GovCMS Um My role has been architecting the technical solution and providing oversight to the development team. And I like beer. I'm looking for a new home. That's pretty much it for me. Uh, the incomparable Megan Watson from the Department of Environment. Uh, it's our amazing client. Uh, Megan Watson is the product owner from the department. She's the one constantly scheming up ways to break our brain with awesome complex requirements and we wouldn't have it any other way. Megan also brews beer, which is, I think, the best hobby a person can have. Jeremy Graham, uh, sorry, the masterful Jeremy Graham, <laughs> the Ganley developer from our partner Doghouse agency. Uh, he's been an absolute champion at churning out quality code throughout the entire project um, at a rapid rate and doesn't look to be slowing down anytime soon. Uh, Jez is going to be giving a demo a little bit later to show you all how quickly you can get up and running with data sets, plugging into CCAN and creating awesome graphs and uh, visualizations. Uh, Jeremy also likes beer, so you're starting to see a little bit of a pattern here. Um, and as a side note, if you use Kodi or XBMC for your media streaming, you should probably buy him one later because he's a contributor to that project. Uh, GovCMS, it's an award-winning program and custom Drupal distribution tailored for the Australian government. It's owned by the Department of Finance and is beating expectations on all fronts. Uh, currently over 100 sites live, over 30 in development, I think, uh, and has a ton of community so uh, support and momentum. Uh, it's been really great working beside the Department of Finance on the GovCMS project, and a huge thank you goes out to everyone who's been involved in contributing to GovCMS. Uh, we certainly wouldn't be here without all those contributions. Uh, of course, I mean, man, CCAN. <laughs> uh, Mexican rap god on his way to global fame after racking up over a billion YouTube hits. <laughs> but no, he hasn't contributed to anything at all. Uh, CCAN, on the other hand, is an open source data portal. Um, it's in use by many governments and large organizations throughout the world. So data.gov.au, Victoria, Queensland governments, uh, they're all exposing data in a transparent and accessible way using CCAN. Um, it's not only a great place to centrally store and share upstream data, it's got a data store extension built in which returns compatible data sets in a queryable format via API, um, which luckily is exactly what we need. Uh, it means you can upload CSV files, Excel documents, and it will translate that into nice machine readable uh, content that you can access over an API. Cool. Uh, so I'll give you a brief client brief um, around some of the things that uh, Megan and the team wanted to tackle. Um, it comes from a static report, a, a paper report. Uh, there are hundreds of images. Uh, there are thousands of different combinations and permutations of graphs and visualizations that we needed to cater for. Uh, we needed to take those static representations and create them in a digital format. Um, yeah, and they needed to be interactive. So some of those many, many variations here. 
Uh, first of all, we've got a scatter plot with a trend line. Uh, we've got labels on the x and y axes. We've got an inset label. Uh, we've got some weird kind of scatter plot thing with a shaded region on the right, inset legend, ticks along the top uh, x axis. Um, yeah, lots of stuff going on there. Something else, some kind of, yeah, two horizontal lines across this one. Shaded areas, uh, again, we've got legends and lines and inset labels and it, it just kind of goes on and on and on and on. There's a lot, uh, oh, this one's a good one actually, sorry. Yeah, so variance uh, between values, um, that one's crazy, yeah. You get the idea, there's a lot of complexity within these things. Okay, not only that, we've also got to support GovCMSS. Uh, GovCMS is obviously a highly secure, well-performing platform. Uh, we can't be adding contrib modules left, right, and center. We need to make sure that this thing is well-contained, flexible, uh, and fairly lightweight. Um, so we had to find technical solutions that fit within uh, the bounds of GovCMS. We didn't want to add technical debt or add new dependencies to the distribution. Um, speaking of flexible, it needed to be pluggable and extensible, so people should be able to take their data and create whatever custom visualizations and charts their hearts desired. Uh, there was also another project running alongside this one, uh, the Victorian budget site. They had their own requirements for graphing and visualization. They wanted to use the GovCMS module. Um, so not all of their required functionality could be achieved out of the box with the module at the time of development. Uh, so we managed to align the development processes uh, and have contrib contributions from both uh, DPC and DOE flow into the module in parallel. Um, and it was a really nice moment to see federal and state governments align, um, actively contributing to the project at the same time, um, and kind of illustrated the power of open source and GovCMS. Uh, so now I'd like to welcome up Megan to the stage. She'll give you some further background on the report itself and uh, some of the requirements. Over to Megan. Uh, thanks, Stu. Um, so I'm just going to give you a bit more of a background of what our requirements were. Um, we produce, as Stu said, a, a paper report. It's traditionally been a paper report. This is the fifth version of the report. It comes out every five years. It's called the Australian State of the Environment Report. If you haven't checked it out already, check it out in about February next year. Um, so every five years we're mandated by the Environmental Protection, Biodiversity and Conservation Act to produce this report. It's written by a, a team of, or a panel, or a committee sometimes of independent scientific experts, so uh, hence the quite complex requirements for, for graphs. Uh, we, um, about, it takes about 18 months to write the report, and it's full of a lot of great information. It covers uh, nine different themes. I won't run into what those are, but things like land and biodiversity and the marine environment and that type of stuff. And so all of those themes have their own data requirements and their own information that we need to put up on the website. So it's a mix of expert opinion, it's a mix of data sources. In the interim period between 2011 and 2016, a lot more data sets have become available. Um, we, uh, we also have this thing called assessment summaries, which uh, these guys have actually done an amazing job of visualising that data, and, but that's a whole nother, um, a whole nother talk. Uh, in 2011, the report was uh, 932 pages long, so we've got to take all that content, mix it up uh, on the site, uh, create different content types, um, make it basically not a static HTML version, which it was in 2011. But we also have to produce this uh, report to table in Parliament. So we have this parallel production process of we're trying to create content for the website, but we're also having to create a printed version. So that's in itself um, a massive uh, challenge. So that's what it looked like in 2011. It's, it's great. It's, you know, it's amazing content. It's, it's a really good snapshot of what the, what the environment, um, the condition of the environment uh, at a point in time is, but it's a book. You know, there's, you can't compare from from 1996 when they first came out to to 2016 when that report comes out, unless you have all of those books open at the same time on the same page. 
So obviously we wanted to do something uh, a lot better. This is what it looks like on the web currently. It's kind of got a pretty boring table of contents, um, you know, really static content everywhere. Um, very hierarchical as well. So part of the thing that we want to do on the, the site is create different content types that can be aggregated or um, surfaced in, in a different way. So if you want to look at all of the state and trends across all of the thematic areas that we report on, you can do that on the site when it's launched. Currently you can't, you know, you sort of read it in a, in a very hierarchical manner. Um, but also you, you need to be able to read it from introduction to uh, closing summary of that report as well. So as you can see there's kind of, there's a lot of challenges. Um, so how can we easily uh, compare findings and content and information and data sources uh, across um, reports and across time? And so one of the criticisms that we had was it's really difficult to see what the trends in the environment are, uh, changes over time basically, which is what we're trying to satisfy with this. Um, you know, we can't interact with the graphs obviously, uh, but we also have to show that snapshot on time. Um, we've got a really diverse readership. We have people in, in high level policy areas, we have obviously researchers, we have people in tertiary and secondary sectors who, who want this resource for, um, for teaching aids. We have private sector people, we have you know you guys, general public. Um, if you're not interested in the environment, you should be. Uh, you can come to our report and read what the key findings are, and read what all of the, the content is, read what the findings are that our uh, independent experts have written about. Um, we've got lobby groups that want to get um, uh, snapshots of information so that they can use that. We've got you know, journalists that want to say, so what is the condition of Australia's environment? You know, what's happening with um, coal seam gas, for example? Uh, so, it's, it's really complex. Um, we also, when building the site, we need to ensure that the 2021 content can fit into this model as well. So then we start to get that picture of we'll have 15 years worth of environmental reporting that we can then show in a really nice interactive, comparable manner. Um, but also, at the moment, it's just me and my section doing, working with these guys on this stuff. So we don't have, we have one Drupal expert in our um, whole department, uh, and we've got about 3,000 people in our department. We have multiple websites. So we needed to have a solution that was not gonna rely on an in-house Drupal developer, um, but somebody, something that we could, you know, I could kind of look at, analyze, make sure that all of the, the content is actually getting served up as it, as it should be, but we can't be running security patches, we can't do updates when, you know, to Drupal 8, that kind of thing. So what was the solution for us? Well, it's, it was GovCMS. It was a no-brainer for us because it just provides this great platform where we can use software as a service, um, I can liaise with the GovCMS people, I don't have to know anything about you know, updating any of the code base. Um, most of the stuff that it could do was good for us, but we realised there was a bit of a gap with the data visualisation. Um, we also want to use the whole um, notion around open data, open source applications that the government's developing. So we're, we um, like to think of ourselves at the moment as a poster child. We're going to try and get out there and, and um, talk about the benefits of using GovCMS, but also using data.gov.au to host all our data. So if you don't know what data.gov.au is, jump on and have a look. Um, the idea is that you know, all government data sets will be available there online to download. So again, that was one of the criticisms from the 2011 report is that we, you know, nobody knew where the data was coming from. You couldn't download the data. Um, we want to empower people to get environmental data and to do what they want with it, combine it with other data sources, come up with um, findings that we not, might not necessarily have, have had. We're also using National Map to, we have a lot of spatial data as well, so not only graphs, but we have a lot of coverage, as you would imagine, across Australia that's um, of a spatial nature, so we're going to use National Map. Again, all of our data sets will be up on data.gov.au. So GovCMS was a perfect fit for us. It allows us to use SAS. Um, we can also create lots of different content types that we need to serve our data up. Um, taxonomies, obviously, to identify. We, we 
clearly report by year, so 2011, 2016. We've got all the 2011 data up there. We report by different uh, themes, so we need to be able to tag our content with that. We also have this thing called a reporting framework, which is a bit, if you think of it in terms of this is sort of how people, how our experts have looked at things, like they look at the condition of something, they look at the outlook for that um, particular environmental issue. Um, risks, risks to it, what the pressures are on it, and that type of stuff. So we have to combine all these things to actually create our content in a way that's going to be meaningful for our really diverse range of users. Um, obviously aggregate content and that type of thing, and filter stuff. But also we wanted to develop the interactive graphics. So as I said, one of the criticisms was we didn't have, um, in the past we haven't had information that people could download. People want the data, they want to know where it's come from. They want to know that that data is actually authoritative data and it can be trusted to give that snapshot of um, the state of Australia's environment. So um, data, this is what we're really here to talk about. We're here to talk about data in the CCAM module. So, we, as an author, as an author on the GovCMS Drupal platform, I need to be able to access the data, data sets so that I can display them. I need to be able to um, choose what data sets I want to show, um, suppress some of the others. So we might have a really uh, massive data set, a CSV file, but actually we don't want to show all of those data sets in there. So as GovCMS author, I can then choose which uh, data sets I want to, uh, data series within that data set that I want to display. Um, Stu showed you a couple of the graphs that have these um, horizontal vertical lines on it. So they're not being drawn in our CCAN module. Uh, they're not being drawn by the data set itself. So there's something an author can actually put on and say, show me a trend line at this particular um, axis. Uh, I won't go into too much more detail because I think Jez is going to you know, talk more, a lot more about the, the power of the CCAM module, but there's a lot of stuff that as an author I want to be able to do with the, the graphs. And also then as a, as a user of the site, as a viewer of the data, you want to be able to hover over, you know, it's, it's pretty common kind of graphing um, interaction uh, available on, on the web now, so you want to be able to hover over those data sets and see the values download the data, download a uh, snapshot of that data, so a PNG file if you want to, or an SVG file. So our print production layout people have been using the graphing module to create their print version of the publication. So they download a CSV file, run it through Adobe products, lay it out in InDesign. Um, and also people that have assistive te technologies or don't want to see the graph, they just want to see the, the table of data, they can see that as well. They can also just click on a button, say download the data, takes you to the data.gov.au resource page. You can see all of the metadata for that data set. So there's no question now of where that data has come from and you can download that CSV file if you like. So um, that was in. That was the kind of boring looking old graphs. This is now. They still look boring, but Jez is going to show you how awesome and shiny and new they are. So as I was saying, these are the, the um, tabs along the bottom where you can Inter um, download various bits and pieces. So, Jez, show us the magic. Thank you, Megan. Oh, um, yeah, so everyone loves graphs, so I get the, the fun job of showing you them all. Um, I just need to switch over. All right, um, <clears throat> so I guess I'm going to start off with some fun stuff, actually showing you the graphs, and then I'll kind of work, I guess, a bit backwards of how you can actually make those and use them in your own site. I suppose a lot of what we've talked about so far is very much GovCMS stuff, but um, <clears throat> this will all work very happily on just any Drupal site. It's, it's not GovCMS specific, so. And our module is up on Drupal.org as well. So this particular data set actually came from data.gov.au. Um, <clears throat> it's a pretty complex one. It has got a giant amount of data in there. Sort of as we scroll across, we can sort of see the records. And because it's interactive, sort of we can like turn on particular sets um, and sort of it, it sort of really nicely dynamically changes everything. <clears throat> Um, it's using a library called C3.js, which I'll talk about a little bit more, but um, I guess that's 
one implementation. I guess the, the way we've used this is that you can use any kind of graphing library you want to really, to really make that work. Um, pretty much all this stuff happens client side and sort of we've also been able to do some cool stuff like download as a PNG which will save that, uh, it, it basically converts it to an SVG, then saves it as a PNG and you've, you've got something you could put in a book or um, as an SVG and you've got a nice vector of it as well. So all that stuff kind of happens client side with a couple of JavaScript libraries which I wrote. So, um, as you can see, it's pretty powerful. And you can sort of have a bit of, I don't know, interesting sort of fun graphs like space launches versus scientific, Scientology, sorry, sociology doctorates. <laughs> <If> you, <laughs> correlations, ice cream consumption versus shark attacks. And then uh, IA usage versus murder. Right? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I'll just quickly talk about um, how a lot of this is made. Um, so like I said, it's using D3, sorry, C3, but C3 is a library that's built on top of D3, and D3 is kind of like an extremely powerful thing when you see sort of some of the stuff it can do. This is basically a showreel of just a, a bit of a demo set showing what D3 is kind of capable of. Unfortunately, our graphs aren't quite there, but it's certainly capable of it. Um, and it's got a plug-in system where you can really quite easily plug into it and sort of make another module. Even make these sort of things in your theme and, yeah, which is really good for something like GovCMS where you, you don't have the ability to create a module. So C3 basically makes doing all this stuff easier. It's, it's got a, a library specifically for charts. D3, I guess, is all sorts of visualizations, but C3 sort of really pushes on the, the chart side of things, and it gives you a really nice, clean, easy to use API. So making all these sort of visualizations, they've got good documentation. If you just follow their steps, it, it kind of uh, comes together quite nicely. <clears throat> So I'll go into a little bit of the technical side of sort of how the module works. There's many parts to it, and I guess you could use just little parts here and there, depending on, on how you wanted to use it. Um, <clears throat> the first thing is, well, I guess working backwards, if we're looking at a graph like this, how it actually works is it uses a, a JavaScript jQuery plugin, which I wrote, which is, I called it Table Charts. It's an unexciting name, but what it does is it turns a table into that chart. So what's actually happened here is we've just rendered this table to the DOM and we just put a whole pile of attributes in the, in the table um, tag and that defines sort of like the axis labels, sort of colors, um, any kind of settings which we want to define for it. So if you wanted to, you could use this on a non-Drupal site. You just put a table in your site and add uh, some attributes. It's, it's kind of well documented in the plugin itself, but not really anywhere else. Um, but uh, it it's, works really well. And I suppose this satisfied a really great need for DOE as well, because it's very accessible. Um, if you get to the site and you don't have JavaScript, you've still got all the data there. So looking at sort of one of our um, simpler ones, I keep on looking up there. Um, it's just, yeah, a table of data. We've got a, a, a column heading and a, a heading up the top as well, and it uses both those to, to convert it together. Um, any questions on that little bit? Yes? Uh, I'm not sure what level it is, but it's essentially, it's, it's, it, it could be used by screen readers. You don't have, um, if you don't have JavaScript, it still works perfectly. So it, it kind of ticks all the boxes. I'm, I'm sure it would fit into that category, so, yeah. I'll, I'll kind of answer that for you, so I'm going to go to CMS. Um, providing that the table is rendered properly, you'll be going to CMS out of the box, does do accessible tables, table headings, and, uh, and those sorts of things. Um, yes, So my, my little plugin which I've made 
reads that table, and then it, it passes all those settings into a nice sort of ordered format, and then sort of handballs it off to another plugin. So that second plugin is one which I've made specifically for C3. So that's sort of one of the points which you could jump in and create your own visualizations. You could just add another JavaScript file. It, it's just a, a class which gets handed a, a nice pile of settings, and it can then deal with those settings. And obviously, it also gets handed the parse data, which is um, reading that table into a sort of a nice array of rows and sort of passing these through as headings as well. So I suppose that's the one place you can sort of start to extend it. <clears throat> Um, and I'll go into a bit further, but there's also C, um, C Tools plugins where you can sort of do a, a more deeper level of integration. So that's all well and good. Uh, I suppose at, up to this point, we haven't actually needed Drupal. We, we can actually just do this just with uh, grabbing a bit of code, but um, really to satisfy, I guess, it's, it's a complicated thing to do if you're a content editor, and we don't want that. And obviously, we wanted to get all the data from data.gov.au. So that's where CCAN has stepped in. And <clears throat> like uh, Stu and sort of Megan have discussed a bit, CCAN's essentially a great place and way to store data. Um, so I've set up my own little CCAN server. Oops, getting a bit close to the mic. Um, just as an uh, example of, I guess, showing you what a author would be doing um, from the government to upload some data. Um, once, once it's sort of installed, it sort of looks a lot like this. And essentially adding some data, I've got just this one here. So I'm going to upload this CSV. Uh, so it's, this has been, the whole module was mainly built using this, start, this one CSV to be honest, but um, obviously a lot of testing has gone on to it, so it's one of my favourite ones to test with. Um, so yeah, just, I don't think any of the numbers are accurate, um, but we'll just call our package Drupal South. Make it public. Next. And, oh, I didn't like that URL is in use, uh, one. Cool, and then uh, the next step is just uploading a CSV, so we just finish. <clears throat> and so at the moment, CCAN sort of, yeah, then, then kind of parses that and turns it into something that the API can read um, as a nice table. So <clears throat> at this point, uh, how we kind of start getting that into Drupal is we use the media module. So I don't know if anyone's familiar with uh, media internet. Um, oops. Uh, but media internet, you basically give it a URL and it will turn that into a file record. So we are converting sort of this remote data set into a file which we can use in Drupal. So I'll just step through how an administrator would go about adding this particular data and turning it into a graph. So let's just copy the URL from the top here. <clears throat> We'd step over to the website and hop into files and add a file. And so we've got the web tab when we're using media internet. We've got a new resource type, which is CCAN dataset. And it basically knows that it should take ownership of specific URLs, which it gets passed. So I'm just passing the URL. It's actually the one with the CSV on the end. And at this point, the website has queried CCAN. It's actually grabbed a lot of the, the metadata. If I had given that a name, I should have given it a name, but I didn't, so it's called unnamed resource. We see that has actually come straight across and it's, it's picked up that metadata. And at this point, we choose what sort of graph we want to have. Uh, so this is where the second, I guess, plugin part comes. So these are all just CTools plugins. You could happily write your own one, which would end up in that list. You, you just need to, I guess, follow the same format. And there's some great examples in the module. So we'll just go a bar chart. Um, and at this point, it sort of starts giving you all these settings, which are specific for 
that type of graph that you want. So um, I won't go into this in too much detail because there's a, a lot of things here. Kind of every time we kind of get a new weird graph come, request come along, it's like, we, okay, how can we work it into here in obviously a generic manner? So um, it'll work for everyone. But in a nutshell, these are the the bars we want to show or the the columns we're going to have on the graph. So we'll, we'll choose those ones. Um, we'll say what's going to be describing uh, the the label, which is going to be that sort of side column. Uh, actually, is that right? No, that's going to be the data sets at the bottom. But it, it does get confusing when you're dealing with so much data coming in and out because you can display that also in many different ways. But I'm going to run with it. We'll just see how it looks at the end. Um, just with this particular one, we actually had um, a lot of repeats here, and it was actually repeated because there was multiple years. <clears throat> so one thing we can do is we can split the whole graph on year, and that should give, actually give us two graphs. So uh, we'll keep it simple and just go all the way to the bottom and just go and save. And now we should have our graph. So it's a pretty simple process. That was just a CSV, got uploaded, um, we got to choose a whole pile of settings for it, um, and now we've got it available as sort of an interactive graph, which is now a file. So I guess in, in Drupal world, we can use this as a file field, um, which is, I don't know, probably my pre preference and sort of embed that wherever we want, but you can also use it in a sort of a bit more of a generic way. Say we've got a, a page which is just a basic bit of content. I found uh, Lorem Hipster as my text generator. And I'm just gonna use the media browser, <clears throat> and right here I could select web and go through that whole process, upload a, a new data set, but I'm gonna just use one from the library. When I created earlier, let's go ice cream versus shark attacks. And we've got all those settings available, so we could we could tweak those settings if we wanted. Let's put it in the middle of the document, save, and you've you've just used it just like an image. So extremely flexible. And I think sort of once you start throwing in sort of the possibilities are endless with these visualizations which which can come through. It's sort of uh, yeah, it, it comes together really well. So uh, I guess that's about it for the demonstration. Is there any, any questions on any of that, or how that works, or would you like to contribute? <laughs> um, I guess one thing I'll throw in is we'd like to probably get this into Drupal 8 at some point, so I think probably one of the biggest things that's holding us up is sort of the, the media module getting in there. So. Um, uh, I think I'll definitely put some more work in once media gets there, but I don't know if I'm committed enough to uh, get media into it. So. <laughs> um, yeah, so we've also got this up on GitHub as well. Um, <clears throat> that's sort of where all the development goes. So obviously if you spot any bugs or have got anything to contribute, then um, it's a great place to go. James? So if you didn't have like, like, these ships, I assume, with sort of certain types of data visualization? Like, so What's that, sorry? Yes, absolutely. So out of the box, you've got um, a bar graph, line graph, uh, spline, scatter chart, and just a table. So. And, and if it didn't have what you wanted, what would be the process? Uh, so it uses anyone familiar with writing a C tools plugin? Um, it's it's very much say the same thing as writing maybe a panels plugin, but it's a case of making a plugins folder inside your module or your theme. Um, you create one file, I think, which is just correctly named. <clears throat> it's uh, probably a little bit of formatting you need to define, but essentially you define the renderer and you define the settings for it. So it can inherit a lot of settings which are all predefined, and you can add in your own custom settings as required. And that render, renderer then actually calls the, the JavaScript to pull that in. So, so in theory, you can write a plugin that did, like, the, the ones you were showing in the video. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. It's just a, a lot more work. So if you, yeah, um, D3 has got a huge array of stuff. It's just harder to write. So, um, yeah, and if we had all the time in the world, we would have gone down that road. But, um, yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yes? 
Thanks for the presentation. You did a great job. Thanks. Um, my question was about private data. So you obviously show an example data of government can use. Yep. Can you work with other private repositories of data and yep. what's the sort of configuration so that that is not exposed to so the difference between private and public is um, you need to use essentially an API key and that API key is linked to a user and they need to be authorised. So the way I've set it up, just to keep it simple, is I didn't use a API key so I had to make my data set public for me to be able to use it with this. Um, but yeah, sort of if you're dealing with private data, you've got an API key it's that uses permissions. Do you have a question for me? Um, did you ever evaluate public.cabu.com for you know different data sources which require sort of you know different sorts of connects between them? The reason I'm asking is we're actually trying to work with data.gov in in India and uh, produce some complex charts which some some data talks about life expectancy, then there's data on uh, 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 you know, accessibility toilets to education and so we have to bring all different sorts of data together yeah. you know, with, with some unique identifiers between them and sort of make complex visualizations which I'm not sure would be possible in sort of CSV file upload formats. Yeah it was something that we um, I did kind of talk to these guys about in terms of combining different data sets into the one visualisation, but we ended up realising that just for our needs we could, in fact, get around that need to create different like bar charts and line charts together by actually tweaking the module to allow that. I did look at Tableau, but I think um, because with government it's a little bit more difficult and also GovCMS was a platform we were using, so we wanted to actually contribute something back in with creating the module. Um, so something that was reusable for everybody else using the CMS. So we were sort of t tied, tied in but not tied in, if you know what I mean. So um, I think, yeah, into the future we will probably have the need to create multiple data sets in the one um, visualisation. So C can do that by any chance? I mean, or what does C can do? I'm going to make these guys feel before that. <laughs> CCAN is really powerful with how you can use and what sort of data you give it. Um, like it's not just limited to CSVs, I mean it could be like map coordinates and sort of all sorts of complex data sets. So I guess about the moment what the module is doing is it's, it's doing I guess what we needed it to do is pulling in sort of um, uh, I guess the, the basics I suppose which is still quite a lot but certainly I guess with a plugin architecture, you can interpret that data however you want. Like with these visualizations, it just gets handed this data and it goes do whatever you want with it and you've got settings to define however you want to set that up as well or use that data. So um, I think on the CCAN side, it'll handle most of what you want to throw at it and on the, the module side, it's expandable enough to handle that as well. Yeah, our constraints are because it's part of the CMS distribution is that we have to develop stuff that's going to be kind of like a one size fits all, and then we also have to make sure that the finance department of finance are happy with the module to actually push it back into the gut CMS code based distribution. Um, yeah, but there are certain, certainly some things that I want to keep developing. <laughs> There's an endless list, just <laughs> my to do list never finishes. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I'm over here first. Yeah. Speaking of your to-do list, have you have already identified a roadmap for the bits that you are going to do next and you want to keep doing? Uh, yeah, well, I guess we're a little, little bit limited, I suppose, by the project which we're on and sort of other stuff that needs to get done. Um, so I suppose what I guess probably a lot of our, our vision is is that the, the next person who um, requires this and has some special requirement is going to build on top of it. But I think probably the the biggest logical next step is maybe looking at something for Drupal 8. Um, but I think in the meantime, I'd love to see a module like a CCAN visualisation pack or something like that would be really cool. Um, so obviously not something we could really use with CMS, but possibly I suppose. Um, yeah. Did you look at DCAN, Drupal version of CCAN? 
Yes, do it. Can you answer that? <laughs> we did, but I mean, we're talking about the data like that you and other existing CK instances, so it wasn't really relevant for this right. project. But yeah. One of the things I'd like to see that I'll put the module, sorry, is um, being able to uh, have user definable time series graphs. So you notice some of our bigger data sets might go from you know 1901 up to the present day. So you don't sometimes you don't want to see all that data on the one um, data set. We may not you know get over that line before live but um, certainly something I want to slate in the future as well as being able to flip between 2011 data sets if we can retrofit we will actually find the 2011 data sets put them up on data lookup and then be able to do a comparison between those two will be something actually that was a question I had while you were talking was is there any plan to kind of migrate the historical versions of the report into the new yeah so we've already got 2011 up there at the moment the graphs um, any images figure-based uh, content will still be static, unfortunately, because the beauty of this now is that we know where that data's come from, and my mantra to all of our authors and all the people on the team is, no data in my graph. You know, you're not getting a graph unless you give me the data. Yeah. I think we're kind of 80% there, but, you know, sometimes you have to compromise. But I want to, um, you know, start that process between now and the next report coming out, going back and seeing if we can, um, uh, get the 2011 data sets uh, and put those up as well. But it, it, it's not yeah, inherent. You've got, so you don't have access to the actual data sets, you've just got the report with the... Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's really, it's actually really complex to get the data, to get these data sets as well, because the way our authors work is that they go and find different reports from all over um, Australia, different academic um, research. They take a you know, screenshot of the graph that they want, and we have to go back and go to data custodian and try to get a Creative Commons. All our content is going to be Creative Commons as well. Uh, sorry, I think over here. Yeah, next. Sorry, I have a question. Uh, I'm thinking about how would this, would this work for the ages, and I'm thinking something, something along the lines of stock exchange live feed. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess you probably could. Um, I mean, it uses Drupal behaviours, I suppose, to trigger building of the graph. Um, I guess, obviously, it's reading a static table, but it's probably a way, if you change the table, trigger to rebuild, then that'd probably be a nice accessible, I suppose, also way of it, sort of, you've always got a table behind it, so, yeah. Um. So I mentioned earlier that I'm part of the LCMS team. I think Doghouse and Byron are back here as well. I think they've maybe a bit understated what they've been doing here <laughs> and how, how cool this really, really is. Um, something that was slightly glossed over early on, but I think it's really, really important. So you've heard GovCMS a lot, but this is in GovCMS, it's not GovCMS. You don't have to use GovCMS. I was just asked, is the module available um, publicly? Yes, it is. Can you chuck in any triple installation? Yes, it is. We have a government department that has thrown money and resources into the development of a thing that they're just now giving away, essentially. As a Drupal community, that's normal for you guys, right? You're doing this all the time. You're coding for nothing and that's like care and biscuits, but um, <laughs> we've now got this happening and this, this is a new change. So I, I personally think that's really exciting and that's really good for the community. And we do that with the community. That's that's what fosters all of this. So I, I think these guys have done an absolutely awesome job. And I, I Any more questions? Yes? Uh, I just went to the model page and it's only available on the sandbox at this stage. Uh, it shouldn't be. Uh, yeah, what's, what's the machine there? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely. I, it could, I don't know if it's fully up to date with GitHub, is it? Is it? Yeah, okay. I suppose we've, we've got a developed branch sort of in GitHub which has got sort of some of the more newer features, yeah. And uh, I suppose issues as well over Drupal issue queues. Probably a better place is probably GitHub. Um, but yeah, I guess either. We'll look at both. Yes, any, any other questions?
Who wants a graph? Actually, just on pie charts, pie charts are built into C3, and I was going to I was going to do on stage how easy it is to make a visualization of whipping up a pie chart visualization, but I thought that's fraught with danger <laughs> coding in, on a podium, so um, but it's a good challenge. It's it's built into the, the C3 library, really simple. Um, you could literally just pick up one of the maybe the bar chart plugin, copy that, and yeah, tweak some things. So wouldn't be difficult. All the hard work has been done already. So yeah. Are we going for time? Is it? So. It's so we do at environment.gov.au sometime around mid February next year. Go check it out. Uh, yeah. Thank you.